Hello, welcome to video number nine about my cancer journey. First, uh, we want to thank all of you that have been uh, making comments on the YouTube and also on the blog. Uh, you know, we've to date we've over 34,000 hits on that blog, and we appreciate the comments, and we haven't been able to respond to them, uh, but we read every single one of them. Now, today we want to talk about lessons learned from chemotherapy, and uh, we're just going to share a few uh, because there are many and uh, we hope it's useful to you. Uh, first, you know, uh, Debbie, we had to decide, we took a weekend to decide whether to do the chemotherapy or to do radiation or both of those or none of those. Uh, perhaps don't do it at all. And we did our homework and we finally decided that to go ahead with the chemotherapy because we had to weigh the benefits versus the risks. And you can quit at any time. That was one of the biggest things that we learned is that once you're on the train, you can still jump off and, uh, and change your mind. The other thing that we learned is the um, nature of those side effects get worse. Uh, the first time you go out and you go, hmm, that wasn't so bad. But let me tell you, by the sixth time, it's really, really rough. And uh, after the sixth one, we're like, we may never want to do this again. So it, it gets worse as time goes on. I was told that I ought to take naps, and I did, every day. Occasionally, you know, I'd say, Debbie, I don't need a nap. But before long, I was out like that, and it was three hours later I would wake up. And unfortunately, still exhausted. And that's what these side effects do to you. Even on Superman days, he yeah. needed naps, yeah. and even though I had to force it. Um, and naps um, and his level of energy are a real clue. I learned. Um, I didn't understand lab values and I was not always good about asking for copies of the lab and I've learned that that's an important thing. Not only that you get the copies but that you understand what those lab values mean and most importantly when they're not quite right that you know at what point uh, at what reading they actually want to do something like give blood for instance. If the lab value is less than 10 our oncologist had been very clear with us that less than 10 we need to give blood in order for him to get well again and, and get enough energy uh, to proceed and so I found that I needed to understand magnesium, potassium, all of those kinds of things which I didn't know before then. And hemoglobin did drop at one point to 9.1 .1 and I needed a transfusion and thank you. You were the advocate and I got it and that was a good thing. I got a good piece of advice early on to drop out of my volunteer activities because I was in a number of them and uh, it was so smart to do that. Uh, your doctor appointments, uh, the uh, infusions of the chemicals, the PET scans, all those visits uh, take up a lot of time and, uh, and then you have some good days. The last three or four days of uh, the, for me, 21 days between treatments, those last three or four days, we. We wanted to take advantage of those good times and we spent that time together. The other um, thing for the caregiver is that I also needed to do that because my time was also taken up and so I had to reprioritize my work and, and reorganize how I did my work even though I still had my energy level, my cognitive ability, I still had caregiving demands and so it's a lot of give and take along the way. Also your uh, health care team may uh, suggest to you that fluids would be helpful. I wish I had listened to that early on. It was only late. It was actually uh, my sixth treatment. I uh, had some uh, uh, IV fluids and boy, I felt much better. And I could have had these all along. And uh, it's a, you know, relaxing, you get used to it. And so don't be afraid to go in for some fluids and, and later on uh, possibly transfusions. You can get used to it. And I had to be an advocate, not only with the healthcare team, but also with David about that because I got tired of begging him to drink as he, he would become more and more reluctant to drink. And once we were able to get fluids, then we didn't worry so much about him having to ingest two liters of fluid every day and, and having that back and forth uh, disagreement sometimes. And finally, uh, time's running out. You know, uh, you got to remember while these chemicals kill the uh, cancer cells, they also kill the good cells. Uh, for example, white blood cells that uh, fight infection. And so, when your immune system is down and you go out in groups, as much as we like to go out in groups, and especially if you travel, it's important that you use uh, your surgical mask in order to protect yourself from others. 
You're not protecting them, you're protecting you and your caregiver. I have a matching mask and when we travel or when we're in large groups and his white blood cell count is down, you'll see us in these masks and uh, kind of freaks people out, but we get uh, extra benefit with airplane seats on well, Southwest Airlines. Yeah, Southwest doesn't uh, assign seats. And so, you know, if someone sits down between us, we know it's the last seat on the plane. <laughs> well, thank you very much for listening. Uh, our video number 10 will come soon, and we hope these uh, videos on my cancer journey are helpful to you. Thanks very much.